Yeah, and I think that's like with anything, as you do it more and more, you start to realize like what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Like even now, like to this day, every single time I do a head of extensions, like I find something else that works for me that doesn't work for me. Or I'm like, oh, I really liked that placement. Or you know what I mean? Like it's, there's so many different things that goes into it. So that's. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, most people too, especially if they haven't worn extensions, they don't really know like what they like or what they don't like. So you kind of just have to gauge it. And, but yeah. every single time I do a head of extensions, I feel like I learn something. So yeah. it's never ending. Okay, cool. So um, everyone kind of has an idea of what a K tip is, a keratin tip extension is. Um, I've got this sheet here. I'm kind of probably just going to like talk because. I feel like it'll be a little bit easier, but if you guys want to read through this or have it to like look at <clears throat> after the class, it's just a little bit more information. But basically, um, keratin tips, a lot of people also call them like fusions or bonds or anything like that. I prefer to call them a K-tip or a keratin tip because I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I've heard, I, I have a lot of people in and out of the salon that come in that um, almost have like a bad rep with fusions or they come in they say I don't want fusions they damage my hair or I hear like horror stories from like bonded extensions so I feel like a lot of people too haven't really heard like keratin tip name I feel like it sounds a little bit better too a little bit more professional um, <clears throat> but the biggest thing with them is they don't they don't damage your hair it's just like any extension it shouldn't damage your hair if it's applied correctly and the proper at-home care is taken. That's the biggest thing is people come in and they spend all this money on extensions and they think that, okay, I can just leave my hair and now I can just do whatever I want with my hair. Like I don't have to touch it. Like I don't have to care for it. That's the point of extensions, right? But it's actually like the complete opposite. You need to be, it's just like, it's just like when you buy like some, if you're gonna buy a luxury car or something like that, you're spending all this money on this item and you're not gonna, and you're gonna put like regular gas in it or you're not gonna take it for regular tune-ups. Like you spent all this money on the hair, extensions are a luxury service. You need to spend the money on the products and you need to take the time to care for them at home too. Um, so I feel like that's probably where most of like the bad rep has come from as well as they've been around for like a really long time. Like you said, you took the Great Lengths course like 10, 12 years ago, and I know they've been around for way longer than that. Like, I feel like since like the 90s or 80s. Yeah. So it's like anything. When it's first developed, like, especially like in the hair industry, like, same thing with like color. You know, there's different things that, that happen that they evolve it to. And so it's come like a really long way. Um, so basically, I'm going to show you guys what a K tip looks like, which you probably all already know. Um, so they're basically just like a small strand. Each one usually comes in the size of a gram. What the bond is made out of is it's basically um, made out of a keratin-based glue. So obviously we all know keratin is the protein that's in our hair. Um, I feel like people get kind of scared of the idea that you're like melting it into their hair and they think, oh, you're melting like plastic into your hair. Especially when you start doing the insole and they hear like the sizzle. I don't know if you notice that. <laughs> it sounds kind of frightening. But um, it's, it's, just, um, it's just made out of keratin and then it's got like a silicone additive as well. So um, it's really, really safe for your hair. It doesn't melt your hair or anything like that. Um, basically what you're doing is you're just heating it up, it's expanding and then you're rolling it onto the hair and it sets really, really hard. And then when you remove it, you basically just break down the bond and it slides right out. Um, <clears throat> these ones are my fave because they're the most natural looking and feeling I feel. So like you said, you had tape-ins and you hated them because your scalp was so sensitive. You probably noticed like they're really heavy and they're also really hard to, to, to hide. So with the K-tips, because they're installed in individual strands, they're so much more natural feeling. They're really not heavy at all. Obviously you have something in your head, so you notice that, but after they've been in for about a week, you don't even notice them anymore. So that's really great as well. Um, also, like Jess was saying, what's really great is once you put them in, they're in there from three to five months. So depending on the client's natural hair, how well they take care of it, um, and all those kinds of things, that's what's going to determine how long the extensions can last. So I have a full head of fusions. I've been wearing them for like five years consecutively. I think the longest break I've taken was like a month from them. And I always like to tell my story because 
I feel like the same thing, like fusions have helped my hair grow because when I went to hair school, I was like, I want to be blonde and I fried off all my hair. And I went from like Rihanna red to like level 10 blonde and I had like a chemically cut mullet, like literally in a crown along the top of my head. And I had these like ratchet tape-ins in. <laughs> they were so bad. I should show you guys pictures. Because <laughs> they're on Facebook. They're on Facebook. Every now and then someone like goes through my Facebook, they're like, whoa, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> like I keep it on because it humbles me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically kind of what happened was my girlfriend was like, okay, we're coloring your hair back dark and you're wearing fusions. And so I took all my tape-ins in, I went back to like a level four and I've been wearing fusions consecutively since. And um, I mean, I just went through another color correction, so I've got some damage in my front pieces again, but my pieces went from like this long to like down to here. So <clears throat> I really believe highly that like fusions don't damage your hair. They're actually the safest for your hair. Um, yeah. What's... Me personally? Yeah. Um, both. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, like, I cut my hair. My hair is probably, like, I think this is my hair, so. Yeah. It's more just volume, but I feel like I'll be the type of person that, like, not only because I work with extensions, I'll always have extensions in my hair. Like, my hair will finally get to the length that I want, and I'll still have extensions in there. Mainly because, you know, that's a great question, because I feel like people get this stigma that, if you're doing extensions, it needs to be like a full head. You know, you need this dramatic transition and it needs to be like 25 inch hair. <clears throat> no, that's something else we'll cover too. Um, but typically you need to be blow drying them every single time you wash your hair. What if you just did like the bonding part and then let the ends dry? Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Like the hair, totally fine. But yeah. if the bond sits wet for long periods of time, it can kind of start to break down and then it'll, yeah, the bond will start to break down and then the hair can start to shed out. And also, I mean, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, I air dry my hair every now and then too, and it's usually fine, but if you think about your clients, they usually follow about 75% of the steps you actually give them, so you, you not even, yeah, if that, <laughs> if that. So I always am like extra like careful when I tell them, like, you need to be drying them every single time because you know they're not going to. Do you know what I mean? So, but if they do sit wet for long periods of time, it will break down and the hair will shed. So that's really important too. Um, so the bond kind of starts to get looser and it starts to kind of like break down. And so if the bond isn't as strong, the hair will shed out of it. Cause you'll notice when, like I'll show you when I'm doing an install, basically what's happening when you're heating this bond up is it's expanding and you'll notice that like all the hair strands are kind of just open and they're free. So then you're taking your hand and you're forming them and then it's resetting. So basically it's that, that bond that's holding it all together, right? If that starts to break down, then the hair has nothing to hold on to, so it'll just start shedding out. So if you have clients who come in and they're like, I don't know why the hair is like shedding all the time, like yeah. nine times out of 10, it's because they're not taking the proper care. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then what, do you know what like the melting point on that is? Because I know like a little bit crampy sometimes, like if you go in like a hot tub or a sauna, I'd love to like soften up. Never had that experience yeah. with Bellamy. Yeah. Um, I work with Great Links and Bellamy and I find like Bellamy is quite similar. <laughs> it's a little bit of a lower price point, so that's positive for like us as stylists because we can mark up the hair and make more off of it. Um, but the bond itself, I've never noticed. I mean, obviously, if you're putting, like, your curling iron, but even so, like, I leave mine in for, like, five months. And at that point, like, they're quite grown out. And when I'm curling it, there's definitely times when I hit it with the iron and it'll soften it, it'll start to melt it a little bit, but for the most part, it stays in there. Um, I don't know exactly what temperature. Yeah, but for the most part, they're pretty damn sturdy. I would say that fusions are probably the most durable method of extension, um, especially for somebody who like works out quite a bit or lives a really active lifestyle. They're really great because they're constantly sweating and um, they're, they're not gonna slide right out like a bead would or like sometimes a tape-in would you can break down like the, the glue in it. So I find that they're the most durable. Um, what was I saying? 
Yeah, so kind of what I was saying before was with clients thinking or sometimes stylists thinking that extensions need to be this really big dramatic makeover. Like you were saying, you feel like the front of your hair is a little bit fine. You can take a pack of extensions. I have a few clients where I just throw a pack in. And so I do half on this side and half on that side and it just kind of fills in the front. So what's really a really great thing to do is like think about your current clientele. Like look at that as a platform for offering this service. You might have clients who have had really, really fine hair all their life, but they like the length of their hair. You can talk to them about adding like one to two packs or three packs, depending on how long their hair is, just to add some volume. You don't need to like throw like six, seven packs in everybody's hair. So that's really great. And you can kind of talk to them about it and like introduce them to it. And I feel like more often than not, people don't know that's an option. You know, people are always just like, oh, my hair is just so shitty. Like there's nothing I can do about it no matter what I do. It's it's never going to change. So that's also a really great way to talk about extensions. Is there anything you don't recommend for? Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like, I shouldn't have said yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like people who don't want to commit to the aftercare, um, like I was saying, you need to be blow drying them every single time you get them wet or drying that blonde. And if people aren't willing to commit to like blow drying them every single time, that's not gonna be good. Um, I would say that's not an ideal client. Anybody whose hair is not long enough for an extension, so pretty much from like chin length up, I wouldn't put a K-tip in, but I wouldn't put an extension in general in anybody's hair that's that short. In terms of fusions in general, they're so customizable, you can really put them in any, any hair. So somebody like KK's hair is really, really fine, but you can cut down the bonds to, to match the density. Um, other than that, I'd say they're really, really great for anybody. Unless there's somebody, like you, you have a client who you know doesn't take care of their hair and you know they're gonna go three or to five months and just destroy their hair and not ever do the aftercare, they'll probably see damage in their hair. So sometimes if I know like, if I have a client who like has done fusions and they're like, oh, it's damaging my hair and I know that they're just not taking care of it, I might transition them to like a microbead or something where they have to be back in the salon every six to eight weeks because then I can kind of monitor it and be like, okay, no, you know, you're taking them out and you're reinstalling them so they're not going for so long. Other than that, I feel like I like to kind of get people, kind of transition them to fusions over every method. It's my favorite. Um, yeah, I kind of already went over ideal client, basically. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Someone that does like a bleach retouch, they come in every like five weeks, would that be someone that like, you wouldn't want to put fusions in or can you do it when they're still in the hair? Absolutely, you can do it. Once they're in there, you can do all color services. It's totally safe on it. Mm -hmm. The only thing you're going to notice is that when you go to take out the fusion, the spot where the bond is, is not going to be bleached. Well, yeah, okay. But bleach is okay to put on top of it then. Yeah, then. totally. Uh, so most of your bleach up for the fusion and the next step should be able to touch up your hair. True. True, true. Yeah. Would you be worried about like the extension on bleach or anything? What do you mean? Like the weight of the well, extension? The biggest thing, like when you're when you're worrying about like the integrity of somebody's hair, obviously if somebody's hair is just like you can't pull a comb through it, you're you might not want to think about putting extensions in there. That being said, I've put fusions in people's hair that is like extremely chemically damaged, and as long as you're using the proper placement and putting enough hair in that section, then it's basically you just need the weight to support the extension. And like I said, you can customize the bonds, so you can cut them in half, you can cut them even down to quarters, even down to eighths, depending on how fine their hair is. So usually anyone's hair, like around the hairline, is always finer. So I'm, always, I'm never putting a full-size bond around the hairline, because it's just not gonna be enough to support it. Um, with like KK's hair, I'll show you guys later, but right around her hairline, and then there's some spots kind of throughout, I don't know if it's maybe where her tapins wear, but that there's, not quite enough hair, so I, I cut them down into quarters. 
But there's also sections where it's just like, it's too fine, I'm not gonna put an extension in it. I'm kinda gonna work around that because if you're putting it in something and it doesn't have the weight to support it, it's just gonna rip out or pull out. As soon as they go to brush it, it's just gonna pull out. Um, I haven't heard that. Yeah, they're saying like That's interesting. Because usually when you stop breastfeeding, it's going to shut over your hair. So if you're wearing extensions, you'll like lose a bunch of extensions. Mm. Yeah, I, that's actually, yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I have not experienced it personally with yeah. any of my clientele. Um, because I feel like everyone is so different, right? Mm -hmm. Like some people will lose. And that's the thing. That's when your extensions are going to start sliding out is if you start shedding hair. So if you know that there's somebody who's doing that, maybe maybe wait but yeah i've never actually personally experienced it yeah. so i've never done it because i always always want to do it for them mm -hmm. so i think i have to tell people like, i can't wear it for like that many years mm -hmm. i have a lot of girlfriends who wear fusions who had fusions when they were pregnant yeah. so i'm gonna reach out to them yeah. and ask them that question <laughs> yeah that's a really good question 2bd or yeah. tbd <laughs> um okay so, <clears throat> I already went over educating your client. I think that's the biggest thing too with extensions, like I said, is educating them. Um, like we said, they're gonna follow maybe 50% of what you actually tell them. So when you do your consult, that's the biggest thing is you wanna make sure they know everything and make sure they know what a commitment it is because it is a commitment. With fusions, when you're comparing them to all the other methods, I would say that they have the least in salon maintenance because you're able to wear them in your hair for three to five months, but they do have a lot of at-home maintenance. So like I said, because you have to blow dry them all the time. So make sure that they're aware of that. That might not be something they're willing to commit to. And then that's when I would say a fusion isn't ideal for them. No, so that's the other thing with fusions is you typically can't reuse the hair. So once you break down that bond, it's no good. Um, I would say that at about the like five month mark anyway, usually hair like after like a couple months, like after like the seven month mark is gross anyway and it shouldn't be reused. So when people kind of look at it as like, oh, it's, I can't reuse the hair so it's kind of a waste of money. In a couple months anyway, that hair is gonna be ready to be thrown out. <clears throat> um, you, there is a way to rebond the extension, but it's so tedious and takes so much time. And by the time that you've hit that, that mark, you've also shed some hair too. When you do the removal, you lose hair. So it just, it would be a waste of your time to do that. Okay. Do you guys have any other questions so far? I feel like everything is mainly gonna be more of like just kind of watching and me explaining as I go. And then we're gonna do like some hands-on and you guys can practice. Yeah, so if you flip to actually the very end, there's an aftercare sheet that I've put on there. So this is everything that you need to tell your client when ter in terms of doing aftercare. Um, I've got a thing there, I think that set talks about product. I think the biggest thing is that they know to invest in a good dry shampoo as well as a good oil. Because that hair, just like any extension, it's not attached to your scalp, it's not getting all the natural oils that your hair typically would, you need to be applying an oil to it every single day. So <clears throat> I use the Young again, I think it's really, really great. You can literally just take a half a pump and apply it from mid to ends, and you need to do that every single day, also when it's wet. Um, anytime you're going to use any kind of heat tools or anything like that, you want to use a heat protectant. Basically just tell them they want to treat it better than they would treat their own hair. That's what's going to also help to determine how long they can go with the fusions in their head. What's that? I just saw that literally yesterday. Me and Shay were talking about it. It's so good. Have you tried it? I've just been using my clients for some reason. You like I it? I really like it. Because yeah. I was saying to Shay, I've seen a dry conditioner once in my life. No, and it was like the meek. Oh, do they? Yeah, okay, the, I didn't like it. I hated it, I didn't feel like it did anything. So I'm really stoked about this. So yeah, that would be a really great product to offer them too. Um, because you need to blow dry the hair every single time and it's, it is a commitment, I would say people are probably gonna wash their hair like maybe one to two times a week. So that's why it's really good to have a good dry shampoo. 
Um, also, you don't want to be overwashing the hair too, right? So if you're constantly shampooing your hair it, or the extensions, it's going to dry them out and they're not going to last as long. They're also going to tangle too, so a good dry shampoo is important. Um, every now and then, anytime I do an install, you always have to clarify a shampoo twice, um, and I always use maxi wash. <coughs> Sorry. I don't think it's necessary to do it every single time. I mean, I would say that you tell them to shampoo their hair twice when they do shampoo it because it's a lot more difficult to get in there. Um, there's also some instructions in the at-home care that talks about thinking about shampooing it in sections. So you can tell them, wash your hair, shampoo it, maybe go like separate it in half and then like scrub underneath and make sure you get all of that and then go in and scrub everything else. Um, <clears throat> Really important to tell them too to brush your hair before you wet it. That's gonna prevent any matting or tangling because sometimes when you get in there like and you're going like this and you get out, the hair is really, really tangly. I find that there's not a huge point in like trying to detangle it a lot when it's wet with like a wet brush. Like I'll take it a little bit, but I find once you start drying it and kind of rough dry it, then the tangle starts to come out itself and then you can take a round brush through it once it's more dry and it'll come out quite easily. But if you are constantly trying to brush it out when it's wet, it could put tension on the hair and then it could slip out a little bit. Um, that's another thing too, is that you want to be telling your clients that when they're brushing their hair, to put, take the tension off the root, so hold it like this and then brush below. So hold below the bond and then brush so you're not pulling anything. With a wet brush, you can't take it over top of the bond, it gets tangled, so this one, especially too, I would say that a lot of people experience a lot of like itchiness, the first like anywhere from like week to a month just because your scalp is adjusting to having something in there. It's totally normal, um, but it is something that they have to get used to. So being able to take that brush and brush over top is really, really nice. Um, also want to tell them too, if their head does get itchy, to avoid like getting your nails in there and like digging under, especially when they're really tight to the scalp because you could be pushing hair around or pulling it and then that's when it could cause damage. So I always tell them to like tap it, tap your weave. Um, or use the brush. So that's why I really like the boar bristle brush. Um, when you're washing, we already talked about that. Do it in sections, remove any tangles before you start washing. You wanna make sure they're using a sulfate-free and paraben-free shampoo and conditioner. I like the Kevin, I love the Kevin Murphy shampoos on my extensions. I've never had like my extensions feel so soft as to when the first time Eliza used Young Again on me. I've used Young Again, I've used Repair Me, I've used Hydrate Me. I find like Young Again and Repair Me are probably my favorites, but I really like Young Again. Yeah. Do you avoid like line products on them? On the extensions? Not, no, actually not really. Well, do you know what? Like there's, I don't find there's any point in spraying a volume, volumizing spray at your root where the extension is because it's so heavy you're not gonna get volume at your root. Um, I still will spray, like I've used um, the thickening spray. I don't know if anyone's used that from Bumble and Bumble but I'll just use it at my root where my natural hair is. That's another thing too that's important to talk to your clients about is I have a lot of people who come in for consults saying, I want volume on the top of my head, that's why I want extensions. And like that's not gonna, extensions aren't gonna give you the type of volume that you would get from back combing your hair because it's heavy at the attachment part, so it's just gonna weigh it down. But you do get lots of body. So I feel like also having that much volume at your root is not cool anyway. Like nobody wants that look, like that's gross. So you can kind of talk them out of that and say, you know, you're gonna get lots of body and that's really what's important. That's what's gonna make your style stay looking more modern. Um, so when, when they're drying the hair, obviously extensions are, extensions hold on to onto water really, really easily. So I find it takes a long time to blow dry them. Anyone, any one of you have probably experienced that, especially with like tape-ins or a weave. They hold onto water so much. So I always say if you're getting ready in the morning or if your client is, has other things to do, go wash your hair, let it air dry a little bit. It's totally fine to let it sit wet for like a little bit of time. You just don't wanna like be going to bed with it wet or leaving it all day. That kind of just gives it some ch a chance to air dry or you can towel dry as much as possible and then go through with the, with the hair dryer 
and you want to rough dry it as much as possible. There's no point in trying to like take a round brush just like you would do normal hair into like the extension when it's still decently wet because you're going to be there for like three hours trying to round brush the hair. So I always blow dry it until it honestly almost feels completely dry because once you get in there with the brush it's going to open up the hair and you're going to realize it's still quite wet under there. So I'll just rough dry it until it feels like it's almost fully dry and then I'll go through with the round brush. Uh, when you're round brushing it, because the hair will still be kind of tangly from rough drying it, you always start at the bottom and then kind of work your way up and that'll kind of work out all the knots. Um, styling, it's the same. I mean, same with any kind of extension. You can use any kind of heat tools on them, just they have to avoid the root. If they're straightening their hair, they can't be straightening, obviously, from the root to the end, otherwise it's going to melt the bond. Um, <clears throat> if your client is going on vacation, unless you're like super confident and they're super confident that they're going to follow the aftercare steps, I find that usually like I have clients who I've told like wait until you come back from your vacation to get the fusions put in um, because like you said nine times out of ten they're going to go on their vacation and they're just going to be like swimming in salt water, they're going to be like trying to take cute pictures so their hair is going to be down like and you know, it's, it's going to start matting and also what can happen with the salt water is it can discolor the extension a little bit. Um, so if you have blondes who are like an ashy blonde and they go in the salt water, it can turn them a little bit yellow sometimes. I, I'm not going to lie, I have noticed that sometimes they do fade um, in the sun or in salt water for sure, the yeah. blondes will turn yellow. So it's really important to let them know if they can avoid like dunking their hair in the ocean. That's really going to help. Also, you want to let them know that if they're going to be in the water, even if it's in a pool or whatever, tell them to wet their hair first, put like a leave-in conditioner in, and if you can, put it in like a loose braid or something. Um, do that, and then as soon as you get out of the water, as soon as you're done swimming, wash it out, and then put a leave-in conditioner in again. So you just want to make sure you're just adding all that moisture back in. Um, yeah, so I typically will tell people to wait if people are like, I'm going on vacation so I want beautiful hair that I don't have to worry about. It's not a good idea because you do need to worry about the hair once it's in your head. Um, when you're sleeping too, it's, you want to tell them to put it in a, lo a loose braid. <clears throat> Especially for the first like week and a half when they're tight to your scalp. You don't want to, like you can, I can pull my hair in a tight ponytail completely off my face. But for the first like week and a half to two weeks, I won't do that. Even if you physically can pull it up, it's going to be causing tension on the bond and then that'll cause the hair to kind of rip out. So that's what's going to cause damage. So usually what I'll tell my clients is just put your hair in like a low ponytail or a loose braid, um, sleep with it like that for the first week and a half, two weeks once it's grown out a little bit. My favorite thing to do is use the, I always forget what they're called, Invisibobbles. And I just pull it in a top, in a high ponytail put in the Invisibobble and then if my hair is like curled or something, when I wake up the next day I can just take it out, brush it and it's wavy and it doesn't ruin the curl because I find if you braid it, that's going to ruin the curl. If you sleep with it in a low ponytail, usually you're like sleeping on the hair so it gets all crinkled and gross and then wakes up looking, you wake up looking stupid. So <clears throat> that's a really good tip as well. You can also tell them too to invest in a silk pillowcase. That's going to stop, especially as the extensions grow out. As you're like sleeping on your on your pillow, they can kind of they can kind of cause tension and put pressure on it and cause them to mat a little bit. So if you have a silk pillowcase, then you don't get that friction. And then it's what's that? Do they? Amazing. They're cheap too, right? You can get them on Amazon for like ten dollars. They're probably not like real. Yeah. But I mean, it's similar. It does the same thing. And apparently they're really good for your skin, too. Hot tip. Obviously, you want to tell them to avoid coloring their extensions at home. It is like normal hair, but that's not something for them to be doing. Purple shampoo, too, if you have blonde clients, I would make sure that they're not using like a super, super strong one because I know like I've got a few blonde clients who are like so obsessed, you know, like with being that ashy blonde, they'll sleep with purple shampoo. If you do that with, the, my girlfriend did it and <laughs> I'm so mad at her. <laughs> but like if you do that with the extensions, it'll dye them. Like we know purple shampoo is really, really strong. And if that happens, there's nothing you can do, right? If you try to, <clears throat> if you try to lighten through the extension, it's going to ruin the integrity of it. 
So that's another thing you want to consider too. If you're trying to color match somebody, you never want to have to lift through the extension because it's just going to dry it out and make it feel gross. You always want to tone down. Yeah. Oh, I rarely ever use like permanent or anything on them. Yeah. Unless you're like very confident that you know exactly how like the tone, unless you're coloring darker, like say you're taking like, I don't know, you're coloring like a 5N or like a 1N, one, one I'd say it's okay to do it dry, but if you're toning like blondes, I almost always do them wet. Um, just because, I mean, even within Bellamy, I find that different packs, obviously the hair is different, right? So different packs take color completely different. So if I do it wet, then I know that it'll always kind of work as a buffer. Sometimes I find too that like they can get really patchy, so you really have to make sure you're working through it. Pardon? I will be, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Totally, yeah. And um, something that I have that's due to is like, I mean, I should have been doing this probably forever, but um, just making them sign a release form in general when you're doing their extensions, um, kind of just going out, covering, like covering your ass, right? Because if you put all this hair in them and then they go home and say they use like a purple shampoo on it overnight and then it completely changes the color of their hair, they're like, whoa, the extensions are, they're going to try to complain and say it would somehow make it seem like it was your fault, right? Yeah, or like if aftercare. The, the aftercare, exactly. They come in and they're like, you ruined my hair. And it's like, no, you agreed that you were going to do the, all of these steps, so that's on you. Like the responsibility, now that I've put it in your head and educated you on it, is now off of me and on to you. Mm -hmm. How you want to treat the hair and your investment is completely on you. Because people will do that, right? Like people are always trying to, going to try to be sneaky and find a way to get their money back and be cheap, but yeah. So I think that's super important, especially too when doing color, yeah. Pretty much I will only install Bellamy hair if I like, if someone was like, I have great lengths, I know that's a reputable brand, I'll install it. Or like Babes, or like, I think that's what, what do they have, Bombay yeah, hair. Bombay. Bombay, yeah. Bombay hair is a decent company too. Like anyone that you know has a good reputation is yeah. good, but that's kind of Again, a point. Yeah, and that's what I would say is if somebody brings in a reputable brand, say I'll install it because I know it's okay, but I'm not responsible for the longevity of it because it's not a brand that you're 100% confident in, that you work with all the time, that you know how it is. So it's up to you. Like you like Easy Hair Pro. So like obviously that. I'm open to those things, but I think it's just like, well, because I've had experiences with inverted hair before and it was the worst thing. What's inverted hair? That's how I feel like when I first wore great lengths, they were in my hair. It can be because with great lengths, they have guarantee. So if that happens, you're supposed to be able to get rid of it. Yeah. Use the bundle and we'll actually test it. But like if you have like with cases especially, if you dip them in water and you'll actually see that it'll like clump together and mm -hmm. it'll be really tangly when it's wet. So I know some of the brands they like they have a warranty to say if that does happen, that they'll replace it for you. So is this stuff like useful and fat friendly hair or? Yeah. 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 Yeah, Bellamy does tape-ins, um, a weave, they do fusions, they do what's called eye tips as well, which is basically like a microbead. Um, I've never had a problem with like any of the ha hair itself or the bond itself. Sometimes they're just like, I just really don't like how they're always out of a lot of colors and sometimes they're just completely out of stock of everything. So sometimes that's really frustrating. That's also why it's great to have like another brand that you're open to working with. Because if you try to get a certain color and you just really can't get it in that, then you know you have that option of going to another brand. And is it Asian hair or Indian hair? They're mostly Asia and Russia. Okay. So they do so that. Russian, like, so, yeah. um, I'm not sure exactly which lengths they use Russian for. I just know that the reason they they go to those countries is because a lot of those countries like they naturally have a little bit of lighter hair especially in Russia so the density, yeah so to get to their like platinum blondes they're not having to put it through so much chemical processing whereas if you're if all your hair is coming from like India it's all going to be like dark yeah. so you have to put it through a lot more to get it to that level 10 ash that you want yeah. um, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> what? Okay, yeah. So, um, what they told me is basically what happens is it's a religious thing in these countries where they donate it for um, they like, donate it to the church or they sacrifice it or whatever. It's like, a, like for a wedding ceremony. Thing. It's a ceremony, right? So they they grow their hair long and then they like they give it to the church and the church like sells it to these companies. But basically, what the money that they make from it, they take that money and they turn around and put it back into their community. So they do it to benefit their community. I don't know like exactly where Bellamy gets their hair from, but I know that it's supposed to be ethically sourced. So, yeah, totally. We can talk about pricing. Um, how I charge for keratins are I charge per bundle to install. So I charge 125 per bundle, um, and then the hair. I think the hair is marked up by about 40 percent, 30, 40 percent. So it's like one bundle. Um, I know, I think 20 inches are like one, 145 per bundle, yes. at, like that's what they're paying and then I'm charging 125 per bundle to put in. <clears throat> Never tell your client that's how you're charging them. No. What, what's really important and what I've found, it's, it's hard to like stray away from this, like explaining it to them because like sometimes you feel like a little bit scared almost to be like, your bill's gonna be $1,700 today, you know? Like, you, but you can never gauge, like, the type of person. Like, I've had people come in being like, there's no way she's gonna spend money on the hair. I'm gonna tell her the price, and they're gonna be like, mm, yeah, I'll call back. And people, like, I've told them their bill's gonna be $1,800, and they're like, yeah, okay. And they pay the deposit, and they're good. So you can never really gauge what a person's willing to spend on their hair, especially girls. Um, <clears throat> but what's really important is, when somebody comes into your chair, you want to you want to obviously talk to them about what they're hoping to achieve. Um, look at tons of pictures. Decide on what length they want. Um, if they're going for just volume, or if they're going for thickness, uh, for length and volume. And what I usually do is I'll be like, okay, so for the look that you want to achieve, this is what the cost is going to be. Don't be like, the hair is going to cost you this much, and then the install is going to cost you this much, because then they're going to start being like. Well, I probably don't need like six packs. Like I could probably do like four or five packs, but it's like they don't know that. Like they don't know how many. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes what I've done, like I've kicked myself in the butt for doing, is because I know that you're gonna lose about like for sure two inches when you're evening out the hair and you're cutting it. I always order longer. But a lot of times too, people will come in, they'll be like, oh, I just want like to hear, like nothing crazy. And so you'll be like, okay, you need five packs for that look. Like in your head, you're telling yourself that. And then you order five packs and they get this like 20, 22 inch hair and they see how long it is. And they're like, oh no, I want to keep it longer. But you can't if you didn't order that much hair. The longer you go, the more hair you need. So if you don't order enough hair for a 22 inch look, it's just going to be stringy and gross and then it's going to look horrible. But honestly, like, nine times out of ten people come in and they say i only want this length and then they see the hair in like the length in their head and they're like oh do i want to keep it long do you ever do like so say underneath if they want like the 20 20 inch look would you ever do like 16th underneath and then 20th up top um that's typically why i just order longer in general yeah. i find like it just kind of gets like a little bit complicated like I don't know I'm a I'm a perfectionist so I take a long time to I take a lot longer to do my install and I'm always like stepping back and looking at it um, but I find if I'm like trying to like look at lengths and organize lengths that it just gets confusing I usually just will order all one length unless I'm customizing a color um, so some of the extensions like these ones from the Bellamy um, line the rooted ones <clears throat> how far the root comes down is going to be dependent on the length of the hair. So if you order a shorter extension, like a 16 inch extension, the root isn't going to come down as far. So if you're doing um, somebody who has like a face frame or obviously like a balayage, it's lighter in the front and a little bit not quite as light in the back. Sometimes I'll order, if I know that I'm going to want like a lot of lightness in the front, I'll order like a 16 inch for the front. Um, you kind of just gauge it from like working with the brand and knowing kind of where where the blend happens. But I've tried that and I, I like to do that with, when it comes to customizing colors. Another thing you can do too is um, I think the biggest thing when you're putting in K-tips is the bond. So you most of our blondes aren't naturally that blonde. 
So if you put in like a white blonde extension right against the root, you're gonna see the bond. If their hair is really short or their hair separates, you're gonna see this like white thick bond. So I love that Bellamy has the rooted ones. That's something I really, really like, but sometimes the root is just slightly off or the root is too long and you don't want like that long of a root. What I'm doing on KK and I'll show you is I've got, this is the same color that's in this. This is a 60. I've got like one that comes all the way up and I'll cut them in half. And when I'm fusing them together, I'll fold the dark one on top and, and roll it so that this kind of blends out the root so it's not so harsh and it comes up a little bit higher, but then you only see the dark bond. So that's something that's really wicked about K-tips that you can't do with any other extension. In terms of color, like you can customize it so much. So if somebody has like a balayage or something, or which most people do, like you can't blend the colors as well or make them look as custom with like a weft or a tape in. Even like the eye tips and microbeads, you can't cut them in half. You can't cut that bond. So um, there's just really nothing that comes as close to being customizable than keratins. Any other questions? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, nope, so I don't charge, um, I don't switch up the price when it comes to length. Okay. Um, I just charge 125 per bundle. Um, that's how I figure out my cost. And that's the thing, so that's what we're not telling you, because we just tell them like the whole cost, right? Yeah, so say you're doing six, or say you're doing like, yeah, say you're doing six bundles, 725, I think. <laughs> no, 750. Let's just say it's 750. <laughs> 750 for the install, and like the hair is like $800 or $900, probably 900. Um, you're not going to be like, okay, so the install is going to be this much. The install is going to be 750, and the hair is going to be 900. I'll just say it's just going to be 1650. Yeah. But the hair itself that varies in price. Oh, Bellamy, yeah. Price? Yeah, it varies. It varies in price through Bellamy. Okay. The cost is not that different. Like I think I want to say there's about a four to six dollar cost per bundle in terms of the difference in length. I'm like ninety nine point nine percent sure. Let me grab my paper. Really? Yeah. On the sheet, it's different. Wow, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we do. We there. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, let's look at for Bellamy hair for K tips. 16 inch, the cost is $90. 18 inch, the cost is 94. 20 inch, the cost is 97. So not even. It's like three dollars difference. 22 inch, 103, 24 inch, 117. That's specifically why I'll usually be like, I'll order longer so that I have the length and then cut, right? It's really gonna, for them, it's gonna be like maybe like a 10 to $20 difference, yeah. maybe, if that. Because if you think they're nice, that would be like 20 per bundle. Yeah. And just throw out a number, like what would, so that's our cost is 90, what's their cost? 40%. Okay, what Bellamy, what Bellamy suggests that you list it as, um, so say for a 16 inch, $90 the cost, what you should list it at is 140. So you're making like 50 bucks off of one okay. bundle. Did you put that under retail or did, did that go to services? Retail. So that's something that's really wicked too. Like your retail numbers are like through the roof, right? My retail numbers are sometimes the exact same as my service services. Yeah. Like if I, you know what I mean? Like, which is crazy. So, I mean, what's great about extensions is there's no overhead costs. There's no really, pr unless you're coloring extensions, there's really, there's no overhead costs. The client's paying for the hair and it costs absolutely nothing to install it. Your, your iron itself, like I think the Bellamy irons are like 30 bucks. And you obviously cut everyone's hair. Yeah. So you just charge the haircut into that bundle, is that number two? It's included. 
Yeah, that's what the, the install cost is because it's, it's like cutting extensions, you're not giving them like a thorough haircut. You're basically just, like you're obviously blending it a lot, but it's very, very like you're eyeballing it kind of. You do the length and I'll show you guys later, but you're kind of just, I mean. The thing that I didn't agree with that is that you're giving them the option. You should ne like they're giving them the option to say I don't want that. And I would never ever 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 let somebody walk out of the door with extensions and no cut. I would not I would not install them before I let them do that. Do you know what I mean? Because like if I just feel like if you give them the option, t if you tell them that this is something different, they're going to try to break down the price and try to figure out a way to make it cheaper. If you just say this is the cost, you either want this or not. If you want, if they're like, do you know what? That's too high for me. Then you'd be like, okay, well, you know what? We can talk about giving you a different look that's going to bring down the cost, but you're not going to be able to have that length. Maybe you're just going to be able to have them for volume. And honestly, I mean, obviously the insult is very important, but the cut is just as important as the insult. Yeah. What do you charge for removal? Um, removal, usually about a hundred dollars, and then I just kind of gauge it based on. Based on no, I just gauge it based on how many bundles they have. If they have two bundles in there, I'm not going to charge them 100 bucks because it's going to take me like 15 minutes to remove that, right? It, as long as they take care of them. Yeah, when you're first starting, I'd say it probably takes you like half hour per bundle to remove. Okay. Nah. Yeah. It see, it depends. Like. When you're first starting out, I don't think it's great to charge per hour because you're obviously going to be slower than somebody who has been doing it for a while. Um, but that's kind of what the general, like, around what I've been charging for removal is usually, I don't, like, I have, like, maybe, like, two or three clients who I just put, like, a bundle or two in. Most of my clients are around, like, five-ish bundles. So usually I'm charging them around 100 bucks to remove. Yeah, so when you're doing the install, um, so let's kind of go through, I'll talk a little bit about the install before we like actually get into it. Um, when you're doing an install, you need to be clarify shampooing their hair twice. No conditioner, no product or anything. There can't be any oil or any dirt in the hair, otherwise that can get in the way of how the bond adheres to the hair, um, and then they could just end up slipping out. So I've been using Maxi Wash. I'll just clarify shampoo their hair twice. Um, it's going to feel gross, obviously, um, and it might take you a while to try and brush out the tangles, so usually I'll just get in there with a blow dryer and start rough drying it instead of trying to like spend like 15 minutes combing out their hair. Um, <clears throat> like I said, no product or anything, and then yeah, you'll just blow dry them straight, and then get in and start sectioning, and then I guess we can just get into the insole if you guys don't have any other questions currently. Does you, Jess, do you have any more questions on price? Yeah, so um, I've got a few sheets from um, the this Bellamy handbook that I can print out for you guys if you want. If you guys are serious, or if you guys are going to be offering this service, I'll print out the sheets. And there's something that I kind of want to work out. They have a sheet in there that explains like a breakdown. So if you're charging this per bundle, this is how much the hair is cost. You're timesing this by this, and that's how it, like they have a formula basically. So I can print that out for you guys if you want. And then also they've got a few head sheets in there. Um, I'll kind of talk to you about placement, but if you guys want like a physical head sheet, I can print those off for you too and give them to you as well. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be great. Cool.